Numbers 35, verse 1. Cities for the Levites. And the Lord spoke to Moses in the plains of Moab by the Jordan across from Jericho, saying, Command the children of Israel that they give the Levites cities to dwell in from the inheritance of their possession. And you shall also give the Levites common land around the cities. They shall have the cities to dwell in, and their common land shall be for the cattle, for their herds, and for all their animals. The common land of the cities which you will give the Levites shall extend from the wall of the city outward a thousand cubits all around. And you shall measure outside the city on the east side two thousand cubits, and the south side two thousand cubits, and the west side two thousand cubits, and on the north side two thousand cubits city shall be in the middle. It shall belong to them as common land for the cities. Now among the cities which you will give to the Levites, you shall appoint six cities of refuge, to which a manslayer may flee. And to these you shall add forty-two cities. So all the cities you will give to the Levites shall be forty-eight. These you shall give with your common land. And the cities which you will give shall be from the possession of the children of Israel. From the larger tribe you shall give many, from the smaller you shall give few. Each shall give some of its cities to the Levites in proportion to the inheritance that each receives. Verse 9, Cities of Refuge. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When you cross the Jordan into the land of Canaan, then you shall appoint cities to be cities of refuge for you. If the manslayer who kills any person accidentally may flee there. They shall be cities of refuge for you from the avenger, that the manslayer may not die until he stands before the congregation in judgment. And of the cities which you give, you shall have six cities of refuge. You shall appoint three cities on this side of the Jordan, and three cities you shall appoint in the land of Canaan, which will be cities of refuge. These six cities shall be for refuge from the children of Israel, for the stranger and for the sojourner among them, that anyone who kills a person accidentally may flee there. But if he strikes him with an iron implement so that he dies, he is a murderer, the murderer shall surely be put to death. And if he strikes him with a stone in the hand by which one could die, and he does die, he is a murderer, the murderer shall surely be put to death. Or if he strikes him with a wooden hand weapon by which one could die, and he does die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall be surely put to death. Or if he strikes him with a wooden hand weapon by which one could die, and he does die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall be put to death. The avenger of blood himself shall, be, shall put the murderer to death. When he meets him, he shall put him to death. If he pushes him out of hatred or while lying in wait, hurls something at him so that he dies, or in enmity he strikes him with his hand so that he dies. The one who struck him shall surely be put to death. He is a murderer. The avenger of blood shall put the murderer to death when he meets him. However, if he pushes him suddenly without enmity or throws anything at him without lying in wait, or uses a stone by which a man could die, throwing it at him without seeing him, so that he dies, while he was not his enemy or seeking his harm. Then the congregation shall judge between the manslayer and the avenger of blood according to these judgments. So the congregation shall deliver the manslayer from the hand of the avenger of blood, and the congregation shall return him to the city of refuge, where he had fled, and he shall remain there until the death of the high priest who was anointed with the holy oil. But if the manslayer at any time goes outside the limits of the city of refuge where he fled, and the avenger of blood finds him outside the limits of his city of refuge, and the avenger of blood kills the manslayer, he shall not be guilty of blood, because he should have remained in his city of refuge until the death of the high priest. But after the death of the high priest, the manslayer may return to the land of his possessions. And these things shall be a statute of judgment to you throughout your generations and all your dwellings. 
Whoever kills a person, the murderer shall be put to death, and the testimony of witnesses. But one witness is not sufficient testimony against a person for the death penalty. Moreover, you shall take no ransom for the life of a murderer who is guilty of death, but he shall surely be put to death. And you shall take no ransom for him who has fled to his city of refuge, that he may return to dwell in the land before the death of the priest. So you shall not pollute the land where you are, for blood defiles the land, and no atonement can be made for the land. For the blood that is shed on it, except by the blood of him who would shed it. Therefore do not do not defile the land which you inhabit, in the midst of which I dwell. For I, the Lord, dwell among the children of Israel. 